A common problem in Excel is to combine information from different sheets and create a report based on this consolidated information. So let's take a look at how we can append data from multiple sheets into a single table or even a pivot table and how we can also do it in a dynamic way so that if we add more sheets of data to our file, all we have to do is refresh our end report and the new information would be immediately included. Let's take a look. This video is a part of my Excel Power Query course. Now, if you'd like to learn Power Query like an expert right from the start, check out the complete course. Link to it is in the description below. In this example, we have sales data by month. We also want to do it in a dynamic way. So when we get data for the next months, all we have to do is refresh a report and the new data is there. On each tab, we have an Excel table set up that starts with the word data underscore and then the first three characters for the month name. All the tabs have a similar layout, but notice something specific here. Sometimes we have gaps for sales document and sometimes we also have gaps for the customer. So if we're selling different articles to the same customer and we have the same sales document, we are missing that information. So we need to account for that in our transformations. Now, the other information that we have on each tab is the grand total. So this is another thing we need to take into account when we're combining all these tables together. We know to be able to combine these together, we have to send these tables into Power Query. And one way to do that is to go to data from table range and create a connection to each table. So then I'll be sending this back to the workbook, but as a connection only, because I don't want to duplicate the data. I'm only going to create a connection to this, but then I have to repeat the process for Feb, March, April. And if I have new tabs, I actually have to repeat that process again. I don't want to do that because it can get really annoying. I want this to be fully automatic. There is another way to get this done. So let me just first delete this. Here's how I can do it in one step. Go to get data from other sources and let's launch just a blank query. Inside the formula bar, type in equals Excel dot current workbook. We see it as the first choice in the dropdown, select it, open bracket, close bracket, press enter, and we have all the tables that are sitting in our current workbook. If I click on the side here, I can see the content. This is the name of the table here. Now notice also that I get the expansion button here, which is great because if I expand these tables, I'm going to get all the data below one another. Now you could decide to keep the name column to provide context for your data. In this example, though, we don't need that because we have the document date information down here. So we can actually extract the month from the document date. So I'm only going to keep the content column, right mouse click and remove other columns. Now, before I forget, let me give this query a name. I'll call it all data. Now let's expand uncheck use original column name as prefix and OK. I get all the data appended below one another. Now I can go ahead and make my adjustments. Notice this time I don't get the column headers inside the data set once I append. That's because I'm working with Excel tables. One thing I don't need is the grand total. Let's go and filter that out. Filters does not equal grand total and OK. Next, let's fill up the gaps here. Highlight these two columns, right mouse click, fill and fill down. Now let's take care about the types. Control A to select everything. Transform, detect data type. Double check if they're OK. This looks good. For document date, let's adjust that to a date only and replace current. Now, I also wanted to grab the month from the document date. So let's go to add column date month and get the name of the month. And that's right here. Our steps are recorded. 
Let's send this to Excel. Let's just go with the default and send this to a new sheet. And this is our consolidated report. I have data for January, February, all the way down to June. This is all connected to my source data. So if some data change here, so let's say in January, instead of 243, I get a one. Let's just go and refresh this to see what we get. Right mouse click, refresh. The one shows up here, but something is not right. Take a look at this. We had a lot less rows. Right mouse click, refresh. It's just getting bigger and bigger. Why? The reason is this report is also a table and it's also being included in our end results. So it's basically being appended to the other tables. Let's go and take a closer look. Go all the way back to the source tab. That's my final report. It's being included in the append process. So in the next step, when I go and expand the content, that table here is also being expanded and added. I need to exclude my end result from the rest. Now, this is up to you how you do it. You could use a filter and say it doesn't equal and type in your end report. Or if you have a pattern like I do in this case, I'm going to go and apply a filter that has the table names begin with data underscore. Okay, so anything that begins with data underscore will be included. If there is a table that doesn't begin with this, will not be included. Now let's go and update this. And now I can refresh again, and this table will not be included. Now you wouldn't have this problem if you created a pivot table out of this, but because we created a table, it's getting included. Now talking about pivot tables, let's actually load this instead of a table into a pivot table report. Existing worksheet A1 is okay. And we're gonna replace. Let's take a look at the sales value by month name. Update the design to show in tabular form. And let's quickly update the number formatting as well to just use a thousand separator. Okay, so things look good. Now, does this update if I add July data? Let's try that really quickly. I'm going to right mouse click, create a copy of June data. Let's just call it JUL. To be consistent, let's double check the table name and also update it to JUL and replace the document dates from 6 slash to seven slash, replace all. Okay, so now let's assume this is our July data. Go to report, right mouse click, refresh, and my July data is there. As you can see, it's really easy to use Power Query to append the data here. In case you'd like to learn more about Power Query and learn how to use it like an expert right from the start, make sure you check out my complete course. Link to it is below. As always, don't forget to hit that thumbs up before you leave and subscribe if you haven't and I'm going to see you in the next video.